A U.N. summit next week could put a little-known United Nations agency in charge of the World Wide Web. And some countries like China, Russia, and Iran, that already have tight controls on cyberspace, are now actively lobbying for new global rules that could allow them to, for example, eavesdrop at will or censor content. Brooke Goldstein is the director of the Lawfare Project, and she's with me now. So, Brooke, I mean, it's no big surprise that China and Iran, and Russia for that matter, would love to control the Internet. But it is kind of a surprise that they're going to have some conference with the U.N. in Dubai next week. We're attending, and this is going to be the topic? Look, looking at the history of the United Nations and how it's tried over the past 10 years to stifle free speech, especially speech on the Internet that's deemed offensive to Islam, I'm not surprised at, at all. I mean, we've seen a coordinated effort by the Arab League, by the United Nations, and with countries like China, Iran, and Russia, try and wrestle control of the Internet from the nonprofits, from the engineering organizations that provide the regulations, that provide the protocol into government hand, and the United Nations is now going to legitimize this. What they already cracked down, they censor the Internet already to some extent in their respective countries. So how much more control do they want? Well, they want legitimacy and they want coordinated control. And what this is going to result in, people are predicting at the very worst, is a fractured Internet, is an Internet that changes depending on whose borders you're in. What it's also going to result in is, are high levels of taxes for Internet providers. So U.S.-based companies like Google or Yahoo who want to provide their services to Russia, to China, are going to tax. And that's going to be an incentive not to provide it. It's also going to create a very highly coordinated uh, censorship, something that we've never seen before. And again, it's going to be legitimized by the United Nations. And while you think the Obama administration would stand firm against this type of censorship, what we're seeing are qualified condemnations of it. We have, for example, Terry Kramer, who is the United States State Department spokesperson who's going to be representing us at this Dubai conference. He said, quote, we don't want to preach to others. Well, the contrary is true. We have the responsibility to preach to others what free speech regulations are not allowed on the Internet. They, he, Terry Kramer also said, though, that they're not going to let this little U.N. body expand its authority to the Internet. So we, we stand opposed to the push, but the question is whether we need to be the leader in the opposition. I mean, the, the, we had you on in the wake of the whole Benghazi thing to mm -hmm. talk about uh, because we came out, we criticized this video very harshly, even though the video turns out was not behind it. But the, the Middle East protests were, to some extent, about this video that criticized the Prophet Muhammad. And there was a real pushback against our own government for not, even though it was, you know, a, a horrible video and it was offensive and so on, whether our government should have been saying that, whether our government should have been out there saying, look, we don't like the message, but what we stand for in this country is free speech, whether we love it or hate it. And this raises similar issues. Absolutely. And our government gave the same type of qualified condemnations of the violence. While they condemned the violence, what they said is uh, the United States doesn't support the defamation of religion. Well, that's absolutely not true. The United States Supreme Court has ruled time and time again that even the most offensive speech critical of both government and religion is absolutely protected. It is afforded the highest protections. Now, the Internet is an extremely powerful tool. And how do we know that? Because there is this movement to try and censor it. Now, what can the United States do? In my opinion, practically nothing, because if you have a, uh, countries getting together and making regulations and coordinating these regulations, I don't see much that we can do to, to change, you know, how they're going to tax U.S.-based companies. So it's very scary. So Terry Kramer says he's going to go to the Dubai meeting and, and is going to oppose this, but our guy, uh, I think it's a guy, I don't know, but, and then, and, but, but is also going to say, well, we're going to, we're going to be careful because we don't want to preach to others. Now, I, I hear your point that we need to be in a position of forcefully advocating what we believe in in this country, but really to Iran, is that really going to work? Is, is China really going to be moved by what Terry says? Well, look, we have to look at exactly how the Internet has been regulated today. We have groups like ICANN, the International Corporation for Assigned Names and Numbers. It's a nonprofit based in the United States. Because it's based in the United States, 
the U.S. law controls what domain names uh, are issued. So, yes, we can preach in that sense. If you look at, for example, the International Engineering Task Force, they don't listen to what uh, Islamic censorship rules are. They operate under the basis of, of what is going to create a free and open Internet. What we need to do, besides obviously issuing condemnations, is maintain control over the nonprofit organizations that to date have been able to regulate or prevent extreme regulations on the internet. Mm -hmm. You already have uh, companies like Google uh, coming out and starting an online petition for a free and open internet, so uh, they'll, they're watching. All right, Brooke, thank you so much. Great to see you again. Thanks for having me.